Next up, we're almost near the end, unfortunately. Shelly Hulls. Shelly is known to many of you as uh, Glad Girl Shelly. Uh, she follows the Pollyanna principle of trying to find something to be glad about in every situation. Being a firm believer in the idea that you have to bring your own scene, she is passionate about the arts in Dayton. A rock DJ by night, a film commissioner by day, she's the director of Film Dayton. Uh, Shelly's here tonight to share what she has learned about the gift of music and memory, and that's the title of her 20 by 20. Ladies and gentlemen, Shelly Hulse. Glad girl. Okay, well, I was all scared and everything, and then <clears throat> I realized that I don't have to show my boobs, so. <laughs> Not so scared now. That's a good thing, right? Or do I? Matt, was that in the email? I didn't, okay. Okay, so we're going to start tonight with uh, some shared experiences and uh, play a little bit of theater of the mind, okay? So follow my lead here. These first few slides are going to give you a cue. And we're going to start with this one. On three, tell me what you hear in your mind when you see this slide. One, two, three. Yeah. Now, I have been alone at night, uh, you know, like working on something in the kitchen, and that comes on, and I run to the living room to mute it because I get goosebumps and scares me. I don't know what's going to happen next. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Right. Jaws. Goes right to your fear center, right? And then it also triggers that fight or uh, flight or fight kind of thing. And you also carry this on vacation with you. You're having the most pleasant moment. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay, several things are happening here. You're having fun. You remember watching TV. If you're old enough to see this, you think about cleaning your car, or you're thinking about that bad Uber driver you had last week. Um, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So this is my first best friend. This is the Pin Crest AM FM portable radio. I got it on my 10th birthday in 1971. The first song I heard out of it was Uncle Albert. That radio never left my side until it quit working. And it got me through a pretty lonely childhood. The Pin Crest record player, second best friend, got me through a lot. Um, I spent hours trying to be a DJ in my room. And uh, it helped me grieve older siblings that had moved out and left me alone, and, uh, but I had their records, so uh, good for me. Uh, we realized that uh, things uh, change, our delivery of music changes, but uh, a lot of things stay the same. Uh, music is timeless, it's ageless, and it's, it remains to serve the purpose of uh, uh, you know, helping us get through life. And it crosses language and age barriers Music can protect you when you're feeling um, vulnerable. You can create your own world and it bring you comfort. And, um, you know, you can go to your safe or your happy place just by remembering a few uh, songs. So this will help you survive the world. Okay. Now let's talk about the mechanics of music and the brain. Researchers confirm that music taken in to the brain from the ages of 10 to 22 become part of the hardwiring as your brain develops. First two decades of music bind tighter than any other time in your life. So uh, we're going to look at the brain here. This section right here, that's the audible cortex, and that is where music and memory is stored. It's different than just memory. Uh, it's music-related memory, and that's very important as you get older. Uh, that is the last part of the brain to be affected by memory loss. And um, it's also the last part to kind of uh, stop functioning at death. Um, songs from your teen years, uh, they trigger neuro commands and uh, hormones like dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, all those uh, things that cocaine chases after that's in your system. Uh, there is not one iPod that could hold every bit of memory that is in your brain when it comes to music and memory. Um, it would take billions of iPods. 
I don't think we really realize that too. Uh, the retrieval system is simple. It's melody, title, and then lyric. And that's how those things happen instantly. This is Dr. Oliver Sacks. He's a pioneer in neuroscience. Uh, and he wrote a book called Musicophilia. He's known for the film Awakenings, a story about his life. And uh, I suggest that you read books about this subject from him. This is the reminiscence bump. It's a phenomenon, it's not a dance. This is a, uh, something that happens in your brain in the cortex where all those music and memory uh, things are concentrated from the first two decades of your life. There are uh, incidences that can bump that and memories come flooding out. You may cry or dance or sing, but it's all there. Uh, you've ever gotten a song stuck in your head? I call it a music wedgie. Some people call it an earworm. I think that's kind of gross. Sounds like dirty ears. But this can be painful, and at some point, if you uh, don't realize that it's happening and you try to counteract it, you can have uh, auditory hallucinations. Uh, I suggest you hum the British National Anthem very slow. It'll take care of that. Uh, there's billions of operators in your mind that make all those connections when you hear music and those memories happen and uh, movements happen, hormones get released and all that. This is Henry. He was in, uh, he was featured in a film called Alive Inside, uh, a movie about music and memory and study on Alzheimer's patients. Here he is, very unresponsive. He's been sitting in his chair for probably two decades just eating, breathing, nothing else. And then when they introduced songs from his uh, teen years, Cab Calloway, Minnie the Moocher, this is what happened. And then he started talking about being a paper boy. And he started talking about wearing a zoot suit. And he knew every word to that song. And he came alive. So I suggest you see that movie, Alive Inside. It's probably still on Netflix. Shared experience. Uh, remember when you used to have to go buy a record? And then somebody would come, everybody would come to one person's house and listen to it. Those days are over, but we still share the experience. <laughs> um, and it's very important that we, uh, we, we do that. You go to uh, dances, concerts, things like that, Van Halen concerts where you maybe made out with a stranger. So, oh, that's just me. Um, <laughs> those days are still around for some of you. Oldies 97.3, the best of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, a little volunteer organization been around 11 years in Huber Heights. It's a community radio station, and they help serve the process of remembering good times, family values. You don't have to worry about it. Please tune in, because all the hours of me in my room learning to be a DJ paid off. You can listen to me Sunday night, 10 to 1, on 97.3, oldies, 97.3. Thank you. <laughs>